So everyone knows the reaction between acids and bases. You mix vinegar and bicarbonate of soda, fizzes a bit and you can make a rocket go into the sky, a couple of feet, depends how much you put in. What happens if you switch out those two with sulfuric acid and potassium carbonate though? I reckon we could get much better rockets out of that. And I can never resist a bit of rocket science. The thing you're going to need is a glass container of some water. It doesn't have to be distilled water. If you want a purer thing it probably should be distilled water, but I don't have any distilled water so this is actually normal water. Next thing you want, copper sulfate. As you can see the label, don't pour it into streams or eat it. But yeah, it's such a common chemical. Literally, you go to anything scientific, literally anywhere, and they will literally hand out party bags of the stuff going, Hey, you want to do some science? Have some copper sulfate. It's just so easy to get. You can buy it off Amazon. It's ridiculous. So, put some of that in the water. Again, quantities, quantities are for people who care about knowing how concentrated their stuff is. Since I'm going to concentrate it anyway, I don't care. So, next step, you want to start gently heating your copper sulfate. So, the bodge runs through me. I'll be using a burner that runs off methylated spirits. You can get it, it runs tranges and other camping equipment. It's fairly easy to come by, but it particularly doesn't particularly matter what you're using to heat it, as long as it heats the thing you're wanting to heat. So I will put that on there. Just adjust the camera. So, you have your cup of sulfate. What do you want to do now? Well, now you want to electrolyze it. You can do that by running an electric current in. You either need a billion batteries, all connected together with wire, or you can use... I'm actually using the controller of an old Hornby train set. But what you want to do is you want to have on the positive side of the circuit, you want a piece of graphite. I have one here. I took it out of a battery. And on the other one, you want some copper which I've got there. So I will put these in. You must make sure that they don't touch each other. And then you turn on the power. Bear with me for a moment whilst I find... I mean, this is what I'm dealing with. So... I got a finger over the camera. Yeah. This this is what I'm dealing with, just like wires everywhere. Um controllers here. So if there's a wire going out the back of there. Um this? I think it's this. Yeah, it's this. Okay. Uh plug is down here. Plug in. I'm so professional. Right, so what you want to do now is you want to turn on the current and bubbles should appear on one of the electrodes. I can see that bubbles are appearing and you want the bubbles to appear on the graphite electrode, so this one. And now you wait and wait and wait. Okay, and so the reaction's been going a mm, few minutes now and if you look closely on the copper electrode, I don't know how well you'll be able to see this on the camera and I'll try and stop shaking it, you've got amounts of copper, that's pure copper metal, forming around there. And if we look at the graphite, 
you can see lots and lots of bubbles. Those bubbles are oxygen gas, because what's happening here is you've got H2O, which is water, and copper sulfate, which is CuSO4. Now what's happening is the things are switching round, so you're ending up with copper metal on the electrode and oxygen on the graphite, and then the water is becoming H2SO4, as we know that is hyd not hydrochloric? No, sulfuric acid, sorry. So yeah, I will leave this a little longer and see what happens. It's been going for about half an hour now and you've got a very deep blue and the undissolved copper sulfate has settled to the bottom. So what I want to do now is filter it and just work with the stuff that's dissolved, otherwise this reaction will never end and we'll end up with some ridiculously concentrated acid. Filtering through very nicely, you've got nice deep blue stuff and there's no um, stuff floating around at the bottom now. And if you look very closely, I don't know whether you'll be able to see this, when the water's coming in you can see little distortions. That distortions is due to the fact that you've got sulfuric acid and water in there. So, yep, it's working. The other test, of course, would be to get some of our universal indicator paper. And, um, oh yeah, that is, that is quite red. Yep, it's, it's an acid. Okay, so it's really, really dark and low now. It's been going for, I don't know, a couple of hours now, actually. So, it's probably not that much longer. And if you look at the copper, you can see that there is more stuff formed around the edge. There's usually more. I'm confused as to why there's not been that much stuff, but... Yeah, to show you how effective it is with the boiling, note the amount of bubbles now, and the increase is dramatic. So I left it going overnight, and it's gone really black, and you've got black stuff everywhere. And the electrode has decreased in size by a fair amount, and it's about uh, lose, lost about a millimetre in its diameter. This is because the oxygen produced at the negative electrode corrodes the graphite. So what I'm going to have to do now is I'm going to have to filter it again to remove all of that graphite, and hopefully the mixture should be clearer. Um, maybe not. If you do the electrolysis enough, it will go clear, but I think you may have to do the electrolysis for a very long time to do that. Um, anyway, it doesn't particularly matter about um, sulphide contamination in what we're doing, it's just if you wanted to do other science with the acid. So, yeah, I'll leave it filtering and then let's see how it does. Okay, so I've been electrolyzing it for a few days now and it's got to a stage where the resistance is so high that I'm unable to do any more things. I also may have accidentally wired it the wrong way around because you've got copper on the graphite electrode which may or may not have affected it. But anyway it's still fairly strong if I stick some indicator paper in. It goes yeah, it goes very red, so it's definitely a strong acid. What I want to do now is I want to boil it down until the copper sulfate starts to drop out of solution. That means you're starting to get rid of most of the water, and I was going to say my lighter didn't work, but as soon as you're going to say that something doesn't work, it immediately starts working for fear of your wrath. Oops, that's a wire. Do not set fire to wires, they tend not to like it. So. Yep, that's going to sit there for the next few hours. Okay, so after all that effort and all that work, I have two small vials of impure HCl. And I've put a fancy little label on this one, because why not? So, I will do some tests, and I'll just cut to a few tests to show you how strong the acid is. First test, I've got some bicarbonate of soda here. Just put a drop of stuff in, and yep, that wasn't even a lot of acid. So let's try putting a little bit on the iron plate I've got it on. 
see how it reacts with that. Full strength sulfuric acid should dissolve that, but I don't think we're high enough quality to do that. Um, it will do aluminium. If I get a piece of aluminium and put a drop on there, Start bubbling. So, yeah, it's fairly strong. Not the strongest. Hopefully, when I manage to get my hands on some proper distillation equipment, I'll be able to do this properly and get the full 98% strength acid. But, don't have that yet. This will have to do.